My paper is quite um, data heavy, so um, please um, bear with me. I will try to whisk you through everything, hopefully in time. Um, so yes, my name is Maya Nidyalkova and I'm doing a postdoctoral fellowship um, sponsored by the British Academy here at Oxford Brookes University. Um, a little bit about my project before I talk about today's topic. Um, it's called Turning Your Back to Audiences, um, Glimpses into Shifting Cinema Going and Film Consumption Patterns in Bulgaria. It's a three-year project aiming to investigate the habits and preferences of contemporary Bulgarian film audiences, their expectations of new Bulgarian cinema, and their ability to access audiovisual products. And the last third part is what I will be focusing mostly um, today on. Um, it was prompted by what I perceive to be a sort of lack of systematic academic research into the area, um, with the exception of Antonina Anisimovic's recent PhD thesis, where she does a little bit of um, focus group work with audiences in Bulgaria. My colleague Alexander Donev, who you listened to yesterday, who looks into box office and reception, and a bit of data collection in terms of focus groups that I did for the Mercedes project, there really isn't that much work with audiences happening in Bulgaria right now. So this project is hoping to facilitate dialogue between um, culture gatekeepers on the one hand and film consumers on the other. My methodology is a mixed model study, so I combine um, parallel qualitative and quantitative approaches. Um, I also combine a reception research and audience surveys. Um, I try to triangulate on every level of uh, the work, um, including data sources, and I'll be showing you quite a lot of those today, um, theories and methods. My participants have been recruited through convenience sampling, which means that they are self-selected and volunteer. Um, and the questions have been adapted from the UK Film Council Cultural Contribution Film Questionnaire, the Mercedes Questionnaire, and the European Cinema Audiences Questionnaire here at Brooks, which you just heard about. So in terms of the sample that I managed to obtain, you can see on the left hand side the uh, map of Bulgaria with the cities and settlements with highest or areas with highest um, density of population. And on the right hand side, of, uh, you can see the map of settlements where I had at least one survey participant for the project. And then you can see where I managed to do um, focus groups or interviews with participants across 14 different um, settlements across the country, different in size, different in location, different in the specific film culture that they um, have. Um, so out of a total population of about 7 million source dependent, I managed to obtain 580 valid responses to my questionnaire and uh, to recruit 86 respondents for focus groups or individual interviews. Um, so this is a very sort of brief snapshot, but just to acknowledge that my data is slightly skewed towards women, um, people who are a bit younger, a bit better educated, who are students or managers or specialists who come from either medium or slightly, um, well, not slightly, the, the very large um, towns in Bulgaria, mostly of Bulgarian ethnicity and mostly people who um, evaluated their IT skills relatively highly. They were interested in arts, learning and creativity when it came to their hobbies. Um, in terms of focus group participants, again, um, slightly more women, um, slightly younger, and this time coming from medium-sized towns. Now, I realize there's skewness in this sample, but I want to point out to the fact that when um, I asked them to agree or disagree with the statement, I'm generally interested in films and cinema, 90% of my participants um, agreed. So this is still a very interesting sample to examine in terms of film-going culture, film fans um, and film viewers in Bulgaria. Before I um, give you my topic, another preliminary, this research, um, this data collection was done in 2018. Obviously, the coronavirus has changed the lives of everyone. And even though after a two month period of lockdown, Bulgarian film has resumed through production activities, um, through cinemas uh, being allowed to reopen and the Surf International Film Festival uh, being postponed to the, the summer period instead of um, spring. Um, and obviously we have uh, films in Sofia already showing um, 
in addition, together with the um, Bulgarian The Father by Kristina Grozova and Petr Volchanov, and some big um, titles which are upcoming. Um, the situation across the country has not been uniform. And you see here the uh, social media page for a relatively small cinema chain called Latona. This is their branch in the city of Silistra, which is um, in the north of Bulgaria. They've announced that they will be reopening. They have this new titles coming up. This was in August and they still haven't. So when their social media followers ask them, how soon are you reopening? What is happening? Um, there is no answer. And the answer lies in the fact that um, the way that we deal with this crisis is very similar to the way that the Bulgarian Exhibition Network has developed in the last few years. It's all relative to the size and location of the town, the type of cinema that is available, and this really shapes the local and regional perspective on cinema going and exhibition. So in this presentation, I am trying to compare official discourses on exhibition and cinema going with some of the viewer perceptions that have been shared during my project. Um, so official statistics, as my colleague Alexander Donov mentioned yesterday, um, it's been a fortunate event that the number of cinemas and the number of screens in Bulgaria has been growing in the past five years. However, there has been a plateau and decline in film shows for cinema and in admissions. The plateau uh, and decline in film shows could have to do with the fact that some of the new cinemas that are reopening don't have as many screens, or some of them, like the um, Latona branch uh, of the cinema in my hometown, Cousin Luck, um, when it first opened, it only had shows on uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that will um, make a difference in the number of shows um, in cinemas. Um, but also the decline in cinema going numbers is something definitely to keep in mind, um, especially with the current coronavirus crisis. And I, I will be very interested to see statistics for this year in the next couple of years. Um, in terms of types of cinemas that are available in Bulgaria, the majority of them are not multiplexes in the sense that they have less than eight screens. Um, there is a relatively low number of multiplexes uh, given the number, the overall number of cinemas. However, they tend to have higher admissions because they're based in large urban um, environments and they also have this um, glitzy, glossy appeal um, and they have average um, uh, higher average ticket prices, which means that in terms of revenue, they bring in the largest um, revenue. And this comes from a European Audiovisual Observatory report on the uh, types of screens in Bulgaria. The majority of them are mono screens, meaning that cinema with only one screen, um, followed by 22% of them multiplexes, and then small miniplexes and large miniplexes. Cinemas in terms of statistical region, that's quite an interesting and an important division. I'll show you a map briefly. So the one uh, that you see in blue, I hope that you see it in blue, um, is the north and southeastern region. And then in green, you see the southwestern and south central region. You will notice that that distinction, which is the formal uh, nomenclature distinction in Bulgaria has been accepted, um, it divides the country in uneven geographical parts. And this has to do with um, trying to even out the um, infrastructure and population in Bulgaria because one, the north is um, underdeveloped and underpopulated at the moment. And two, Sofia is in the southwest and it currently houses between a third and um, half of Bulgaria's population, depending on sources. So what you will see when we look at statistical regions is that in the northern and southeastern Bulgaria, you have 40 cinema screens, 106, um, 40 cinemas, 106 screens. And in the southwestern and south central Bulgaria, you have 44 cinemas and 131 screens. So even though it's the smaller part, it still has more cinemas, more screens, and important Importantly, um, because it's the smaller part, um, the cinemas are, are closer in terms of distance, um, it's more densely populated, so people don't have to travel supposedly as far away to get to a cinema um, in the southwest and south central. 
So um, this corresponds to a study in um, Eastern Europe, which shows that Eastern Europeans, whilst they make up about 20% of EU's population, they only have access to about 12% of cinema screens. And the European Audiovisual Observatory has tried to adjust to see what the catchment area of a cinema um, location should be and they've arrived at this um, conclusion that a 30 minute or a 45 minute drive would mean that the catchment area pretty much covers most of the population in Eastern Europe. Um, this shows that the region, um, sorry, the report also shows that the region relies heavily on monoscreens, usually located in the centre of cities. Um, this, however, as we've seen in the Bulgarian statistics of, in terms of revenue, does not imply that most of the cinema tickets are sold for mom screens and there is no direct link between accessibility of type of theatre and its level of admissions. So I would like you to keep this in mind. Accessibility and profitability are not one and the same and they're not always um, something um, that can often be reconciled. So going back to where I went to do my research, those are the places um, where there was at least one survey participant available to do my survey. Out of those places where I had survey participants, these are the places where they had access to cinemas, and these are the places where there were more than one cinema theatre available for survey participants. So I wanted to measure accessibility, and I asked my participants on their perceptions of ticket prices, general perceptions of ease of access to going to the cinema, and perceptions of information flow. So um, the question, cinema tickets are too expensive, well the statement, cinema tickets are too expensive nowadays, I asked my participants to agree or disagree, and the majority of them were either neutral or they tended to agree. Um, of course, that doesn't really tell you much about regions, so I wanted to look first at um, city settlement sizes, um, where people came from and whether that had an influence over their perceptions of prices. And indeed, it was discovered that there was a statistically significant difference between certain groups, namely people coming from medium-sized towns and people coming from small-sized towns. And you can see on the graph here, small and medium have the largest difference. Now, I speculate that people in small towns are actually um, people who can commute for work. So perhaps they do work in larger cities, um, they tend to um, earn perhaps a little bit more um, and they can afford to go to the cinema or the cinema venues in those smaller places perhaps have lower prices um, because they're mono screens, because they're smaller chains um, in comparison to um, cinemas in medium-sized settlements um, where the lifestyle perhaps um, and, and quality of life doesn't quite match up the prices. And going into the qualitative part of it, um, people um, coming from a various settlements, the very large town of Burgas, for example, a participant said, I can afford going to the cinema. It's not that I can't, but I think that um, uh, cinema tickets are a bit too expensive. Cinema needs to be an accessible element for the population, let's put it that way, whether they're rich or poor. Um, and a male survey participant uh, from the town of Velikoturnovo, which is in the north central part of Bulgaria, um, and it's a medium sized town, he said the ticket prices are a bit high for the standard of living of the average Bulgarian. We need more cinema theatres, we need this accessibility. Um, there was an interesting discussion in my hometown of Cousin Luck um, between a male and a female participant, um, and it's a medium-sized town again. Um, so they agreed that cinema tickets are expensive, they're not accessible, and oftentimes you want to go to the big um, um, multiplex in Stara Zagora, um, and that is an added cost. And finally, I had a participant from the town of Kalofer, which is one of the very small settlements. It has about 2,000 people living there. Um, and she observed that um, there's an outflow from cinemas because tickets are expensive. Uh, bigger towns don't tend to notice the prices because people earn well there. The next question, 
I ask my participants um, if they feel they can go to the cinema easily, um, if they feel like it. And the majority of them agreed. But again, let's have a look at the different settlement sizes and groups. There was a very distinct difference between whether people came from a smaller type of settlement, smaller type of town, or a larger, a bigger um, type of settlement. So there was a statistically highly significant difference between the groups. That was between groups, um, the very small and small, very small and large, very small and very large, and medium and very large. Um, so looking at the importance of location, looking at um, this perception of whether you can go easily to the cinema if you feel like it, um, I had a male survey participant uh, from the um, small town of Devon in the southwest of Bulgaria who said there's no cinema theatres, there's no theatre in Devon, the closest one um, is 50 kilometres away, which if we go back to the, the idea of catchment areas, even though it might be within catchment area, there might be transport problems. Um, I think Devon is in a mountainous region, um, so it's um, not as accessible. And I had a discussion between a um, male participant from the small um, settlement of Tran um, and one from Bohovo, which is actually a suburb of the um, Sofia the capital city, they talked about how you have to, um, maybe cinema tickets aren't as expensive, but you still have to travel with your family and that's an added expense. Um, and the participant from Buhovo who, who works in the capital said, yes, but it's just not sustainable to have cinemas in small towns. Um, the novelty of it will wear out um, and it just, it, it won't survive. Um, lastly, I asked my participants how well informed they feel about the films which are screened in their area or town. The majority of them said they felt quite, they felt quite well informed. Um, I did a bit of statistical analysis. There was no significant difference between the different settlement sizes and I said, yay, it's because of the internet. The internet has made at least the information about new films and films in general accessible. And indeed, people in focus groups, um, when I asked them how they learn about new films, um, a participant from the medium-sized town of Gabrovo in the northeast said, there's a tableau um, near the bus stop, also not to mention the internet and word of mouth. Um, and in the capital of Sofia, they talked about Facebook and YouTube. Um, and in the uh, small town of Botevgrad, uh, which is in the southwest again, there was one participant who talked exclusively about the internet, about his friend's um, website for film criticism as well as the fact that YouTube now personalizes the videos and ads that they um, recommend to you as part of your viewing experience. So that's how he sees most of the new trailers. Unfortunately, though, um, there were still some differences in terms of the two very large regions in Bulgaria, the northeast, um, the north and southeast and the southwest and south central. When I um, ran another comparison in terms of perceptions of prices, ease of access and information flow based on those two big distinctions and not just on settlement sizes, um, there was quite a difference in terms of perceptions of price uh, between the two regions and in terms of perceptions of information flow. And you can see here in the northern and southeastern region, um, it was perceived a, a bit um, a bit less um, um, easy to go to the cinema um, than the southwest and south central region um, and in terms of information flow again the north the northern and southeastern parts were less privileged so some preliminary conclusions um, this is not an exhaustive account but a challenge to look beyond the official discourses beyond what we have as official statistics um, accessibility which carries social value and social meaning and um, this, this love for film, film viewing and the cinema, it doesn't always equal profitability. 
Opinions that, of course, depend on more than just size and location of settlement. Of course, perceptions of accessibility can have to do with personal issues and caregiving and um, time, free time and availability. Um, but if we are going to look at sustainability and, of course, after the coronavirus crisis, um, crisis management, we really need to understand those differences between local and regional audiences to be able to um, expand the cultural offer um, and uh, perhaps contribute to this uh, sense of, of social importance that cinema has. Thank you.